Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture three of uh, Internet of Things. Uh, I'm Neda and uh, today I'm going I'm gonna talk about uh, IoT communication technologies and protocol. Uh, okay, let's start by the agenda for today. Uh, this is uh, this lecture is organized in five chapters or uh, five uh, topics. Uh, one is introduction to IoT communication. Uh, uh, second topic is about communication technologies, and uh, the third uh, topic is TCP/IP layer model. And the fourth one is IoT stack of protocols. And uh, the last one is remote sensing and um, against remote control. OK. Introduction to IoT communication. In lecture one, uh, we talked about IoT, its reference model, uh, its entities like sensors, actuators, uh, client, backend, and uh, gateways, and uh, we saw that we saw some example of each. In lecture two, we specifically went through the sensing uh, devices, uh, I mean MCUs like uh, Pico W, and electronic devices that got familiar, uh, and we got familiar with the temperature sensors and uh, saw how how we could read temperature and humidity values uh, from this sensor. Uh, in this lecture, uh, I'm going to talk about communication. Uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, communication is uh, one of the basic building blocks of IoT, uh, which is needed to deliver, uh, uh, to be included to deliver the IoT functionality. Uh, so we uh, covered uh, IoT in capture in uh, lecture one, and we covered uh, sensing in lecture two. So lecture three, you can see communication that I bolded here in blue. Is uh, um, when we talk about communication, uh, this uh, 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 topics subtopics uh, comes uh, always uh, uh, to mind, and it's very important to consider IoT communication importance, IoT network architecture, IoT data management, and IoT security and privacy issues. Uh, let's talk. Let's start with the uh, importance of communication in IoT. And communication is a, a critical aspect of IoT as it enables different devices and systems to share information and uh, collaborate and uh, make decisions autonomously. IoT devices uh, collect a vast amount of data from sensors and other sources and communication facilitates the transmission of this data to the cloud or other devices for processing and storage and analysis. Uh, effective communication also enables IoT devices to interact with other systems such as smart homes, smart cities and industrial systems. Uh, moreover, communication in IoT plays a crucial role in enabling the inter uh, interoperability of various devices and systems. It allows, uh, it, interoperability means that uh, it allows different devices to communicate and uh, share data regardless of their uh, manufacture or technology used. Uh, this interoperability in, uh, enables the development of complex IoT ecosystems uh, that integrate various devices, systems, and platform. In addition to uh, interoperability, communication is also essential in uh, IoT for real-time monitoring and control of devices and uh, systems. IoT devices need to communicate with each other and uh, also with the cloud in real time to uh, receive updates, uh, send alerts, and make decisions. And uh, okay, one example uh, can be industrial systems that IoT devices communicate with each other to optimize production processes and minimize uh, downtime. Uh, furthermore, uh, 
Effective communication in IoT is critical for ensuring the security and privacy of data. IoT devices uh, collect sensitive information and communication enables uh, this, uh, the secure uh, transmission of this data to the cloud or other devices for processing and analysis. So that's uh, um, also, this is the reason that security and uh, privacy issues uh, should be considered when we talk about the communication. Uh, IoT network uh, architectures refer to the way that IoT devices are connected to each other in a network. There are several types of uh, IoT network architecture, each with its own advantages and uh, disadvantages. But two common um, types of IoT network architecture are um, mesh and uh, uh, star topologies. Uh, mesh uh, mesh networks uh, are a type of uh, decentralized network architecture where each IoT device in the network uh, acts as a node and uh, is able to communicate with other nodes uh, directly or uh, through other nodes. Uh, it means uh, if you have a I will show you in the next sli slide. If you have uh, three different devices, for example, they are many to many. Uh, I mean, from each one, you can connect to the others. So uh, the nodes in a mesh network work together to transmit data across uh, the network, and uh, uh, forming a self-healing and resilient network. One of the primary benefits. Uh, mm, um, uh, sorry, uh, here you can see the mesh, uh, full mesh, uh, full mesh, and uh, partial mesh. Here, uh, uh, one of the um, primary benefits of mesh networks uh, is that uh, they are very reliable, as the network is not dependent on any single device or uh, connection. Uh, if uh, it means that if one device fails or goes offline, uh, the other devices can still communicate with each other, uh, and uh, there is no single point of failure. Uh, this makes mesh networks ideal for large-scale IoT develop deployments, where reliability is a critical requirement. Um, but mesh networks can be more complex and expensive to set up uh, than other network architectures, as each uh, device in the network needs to needs to be capable of routing data to other devices. Uh, this can also uh, lead to higher power consumption, as devices need to stay powered uh, on to maintain, maintain the network. So here we can see if it is a full mesh, we have from each device, we have connection to other devices. And here uh, it can connect with all the devices around it. So here we don't have, if, if for example, this one crashes, uh, we will have other roads to connect, um, to make connection uh, the network. Another uh, IoT network architecture is star topologies. Star topologies uh, are a type of centralized network architecture where all IoT devices in the network are connected to a central hub or um, server. In a star topology, each device communicates with the hub, which then uh, relays the data to other devices as needed. One of the primary benefits of uh, star topologies is that uh, they are simple and uh, easy to set up. And uh, all devices uh, connect to a single point, which can simply the network design and reduce the need for complex routing algorithms. Uh, star topologies are also less power um, Intensive, in, um, intensive than mesh networks as, uh, because devices can be turned off when um, uh, they are not in use. Uh, but star topologies are less resilient than um, mesh networks uh, because the entire network is dependent on the central hub. 
if uh, hub fails, uh, the entire network can go down. And this makes a start topologies less suitable um, for large scale uh, IoT deployments uh, where reliability is critical. And uh, this you can see here the star uh, topology that is like a star. We have hub in the middle and the sensor nodes are connected to this hub. So uh, mesh networks and star topologies are two common IoT network architecture and each with its own um, advantages and disadvantages. And the choice of network architecture depends on the specific requirements of the IoT deployment, such as reliability, scalability, and power consumption. Uh, IoT data management uh, and processing refer to the way that data generated by IoT devices uh, and mm, this data should be collected, stored, analyzed, and uh, acted up. Edge computing and cloud computing uh, are two primary uh, approaches to IoT data management and processing. Uh, edge computing processes data uh, locally on the IoT uh, uh, device or at the network edge, uh, while cloud-based uh, com computing or solution transmit data to a, a remote cloud server for processing and storage. The choice of approach depends on the specific requirements of the IoT deployment, such as response time, scalability, and uh, cost effect effectiveness. Um, you can see here in, uh, in this photo, there are the devices. I, um, I, I will mention later that uh, Edge and Fog, or I should say here that Edge and Fog uh, are uh, the words that uh, they are um, used interchangeably. Uh, but uh, edge devices are the devices that are edge, means the edge of the network where the data are um, produced. And folk are in the middle. Uh, when um, uh, we gather this data and we want to send it to the cloud that is in the uh, uh, top and uh, we can do um, if, if there is a real-time computation, we can have it in the edge devices, but if there is uh, no need for uh, real-time processing, we can send that data and uh, keep it them as archive and then do, uh, and then after that, um, we can do analyzing on the data or whatever we want to do with the data. But uh, here there is uh, always three layers. So we have edge, we have, uh, Fog and we have cloud. Uh, if you wanna uh, uh, edge and fog and cloud computing are two primary approaches to IoT data management and processing. I wrote it here, but in IoT, in, in we, we need all of them. We have devices. We can do edge computing here. We can do for computing here and we can do cloud computing here and uh, it depends uh, to our IoT application that uh, it is real time uh, computing or not so uh, that uh, i wrote it here edge and for computing but there is um, for sure uh, differences between these two and uh, Let's talk about the uh, edge computing. Uh, edge computing is a decentralized approach to data processing that allows IoT devices to process data locally uh, at the network edge instead of transmitting data to a central server or cloud for processing. Edge computing brings data processing closer to the source of the data and reduces the need for uh, reduces the need for uh, data to be transmitted to a, a central server or a cloud for processing. The, uh, this uh, reduces the amount of data that needs to be transmitted as well as the associated network bandwidth usage and latency. Uh, Data is processed on the IoT device or at the network 
age, which can provide faster response times as the data uh, does not need to be transmitted to a central server for processing. This can also enable real-time analytics and uh, decision making as data can be processed um, as soon as it is generated. By processing data locally, edge computing reduces the amount of data that needs to be transmitted over the network, which can reduce network bandwidth usage and latency. This can be especially important uh, in applications where low latency is critical, such as in real-time monitoring and uh, control system. And edge computing requires more powerful hardware on the IoT device to process data locally. This can increase the cost and complexity of the IoT device as well as the power consumption. If you want to know more about uh, edge power computing, uh, there is a link to my uh, YouTube uh, lecture uh, two years ago. So uh, I explained what is for computing and what is the, the drivers behind it and uh, you can go and um, uh, listen to it. Uh, okay, uh, another uh, IoT data management uh, is cloud uh, computing. Cloud computing is a centralized approach to data processing that involves transmitting data to a remote cloud server for processing and storage. Uh, cloud computing invo uh, involves transmitting data to a uh, remote cloud server for processing and storage. This provides a centralized location for data storage and management, making it easier to manage large amount of data. Uh, because, um, cloud computing enables scalability and flexibility in data processing and storage uh, as the processing power and storage capability of the cloud server can be easily uh, adjusted to meet the needs of the application. And cloud computing reduces the need for uh, powerful hardware on the uh, IoT device as um, as uh, um, data is processed and stored in the cloud. Uh, so this can lower the cost and complexity of the IoT device, uh, as well as reduce its power consumption. And cloud computing can be less responsive than edge computing due to network latency, as data must be transmitted to and from the cloud server. This can be a concern in applications where uh, low latency is critical, such as the real-time monitoring and control system, because we want to do in the real-time, so sending uh, data from um, the edge where the data is produced to the cloud, it takes a lo uh, lot of time. So for the application that they need real-time uh, processing, uh, cloud maybe is not a good solution. So cloud computing can be more expensive than uh, edge computing, especially for large scale deployments uh, as cloud based solutions often involve paying for processing power and storage capacity on a usage basis. Uh, another um, subtopic is uh, security and privacy in IoT communication. Security and privacy are critical concerning IoT communications as IoT devices are often connected to sensitive systems and can collect large amounts of personal data. Uh, um, I want to uh, mention here that privacy is the right to control how your information is viewed and used while security is protection against threats uh, or danger. So these two uh, should be uh, distinguished from each other. Uh, okay, uh, I, um, here are uh, some of the key security and privacy issues in IoT communication uh, aligned with potential solution. Uh, Okay, data encryption is a process of uh, converting data into a code that can only be uh, deciphered with a uh, key. 
Um, so IoT communication should uh, use a strong encryption to protect sensitive data from being, or I mean, strong encryption, a uh, good algorithms uh, uh, to to protect the sensitive data from being uh, intercepted or accessed by unauthorized parties. Uh, device uh, authentication. Device authentication is the process of verifying that an IoT device is uh, legitimate and authorized to access a particular system or network. Uh, authentication mechanisms such as passwords, uh, digital certificates, and biometric identification can be used to ensure that only authorized devices can access the network. Access control uh, refers to the process of managing uh, which users and devices have access to particular resources. Uh, access control mechanisms such as firewalls, virtual uh, private networks like VPNs, and um, role-based access control and uh, like RBC, R, I mean RBAC can be used to limit access to sensitive data and systems. And security patches and uh, updates, uh, IoT devices are vulnerable to uh, security threats and, and manufacturers must issue regular security patches and updates to address these uh, vulnerabilities. Users uh, um, should ensure that their devices are updated with the latest security patches and updates to uh, protect against security threats. Uh, and the last uh, option uh, uh, case is uh, user education. Users should be educated about the uh, security and privacy risk uh, associated with IoT communication and how to protect themselves and their data. So training and awareness uh, program can help users understand how to identify and respond to security threats and how to use IoT devices safely and uh, responsibly. Okay, uh, in topic two, I want to talk about uh, communication uh, technologies. Communication technologies are methods used to transmit and exchange information between individuals, groups, or systems. Uh, these technologies uh, have evolved significantly over time from the invention of the telegraph and telephone to the development of the internet and wireless communication. These technologies have greatly um, impacted the way we communicate and interact with each other as they enable us to connect and exchange information across uh, vast distance and in real time. Uh, also, they have uh, various industries such as business, education, healthcare, and entertainment, enabling faster and more efficient communication and collaboration. So let's see uh, uh, with uh, more details uh, what uh, communication technologies we have. Uh, IoT devices uh, use various application protocols to communicate with servers or other uh, devices over the internet. Uh, so I'm, I am going to talk uh, about the concept of uh, connectivity in computer networking. Connectivity refers to the ability to communicate with um, another computer or device. And it's an essential aspect of uh, modern technology that enables us uh, to stay connected and share information with others. Uh, there are different types of connectivity depending on the range and scope of the network. For example, we have personal area network or PANs uh, in abbreviation, which are uh, used for short range communication between devices in close proximity to each other. Examples of PAN technologies include uh, Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE and SIGP, which typically have a range of up to 30 meters. Uh, we also have local area networks or LANs, which are used to connect devices within a specific location, such as a building or campus. 
Uh, Examples of LAN technologies include Ethernet and Wi-Fi, which typically have a range of up to 100 meters. And uh, finally, we have a wide area network, so WANs, uh, which are used to connect devices uh, across um, uh, large geographics, such as uh, um, large geographic area, uh, such as cities or uh, even countries. And the example of uh, uh, WAN technologies include uh, for um, 4.5G or LTE, uh, cellular networks, and uh, LoRaWAN, uh, which can have ranges of up to 15 kilometers. Uh, later, uh, we will have a lecture about LoRaWAN and LoRa, and uh, I will um, talk about it more. So for now, just uh, is good to know that this uh, communication technology exists. So we can see that the range of connectivity grows from a room to a building or a city and as we move from pans to lands to vans. Uh, the specific technology used uh, or we are going to use it, it will depend on the requirements of the network, such as the distance between uh, devices and the uh, amount of the data that needed, uh, that we need to uh, transmit or is, they are needed to be transmitted. Okay, there are different communication technologies we, uh, which have varying bandwidths and uh, ranges that affect their suitability uh, for different IoT applications. Uh, Wi-Fi is a high bandwidth communication technology that provides fast data transfer rates but uh, has a limited range. Wi-Fi operates in the 2.5 4 uh, gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequency bands and can transmit data at the speeds of up to several hundred megabits uh, per second over a range of a few hundred feet. Uh, Wi-Fi is suitable for applications that require high speed data transfer within a limited range. Uh, a limited range, uh, such as uh, smart homes, offices, and industrial systems. PLE uh, mm, uh, uh, or Bluetooth Low Energy is a low power, short range uh, wireless communication technology that operates in uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency band and uh, it has a lower bandwidth than Wi-Fi, but it has a longer range of uh, up to uh, 100 meters. Uh, BLE is suitable for applications and that require low power communication and data transfer within a limited range, such as wearable uh, devices, um, health monitoring system, and proximity sensors. Uh, the next option is a, a cellular communication technology that provides high bandwidth data transfer over a wide range. Cellular networks uh, use radio waves to provide mobile communication over large areas and operate in different frequency bands such as 2, uh, 2G, uh, 3G, 4G and 4.5 or LTE and 5G. Cellular networks can transmit data at different uh, at mm, different speed of uh, up to several gigabits or second um, uh, sorry gigabits uh, um, uh, per second over a range of several miles. Cellular communication is suitable for applications that require high speed data transfer over a wide range, uh, such as uh, remote monitoring, connected vehicles, and um, smart cities. Uh, LoRa. LoRa or long range. Uh, it's a uh, short of uh, two words, L-O, long, uh, R-A, range. Uh, is a uh, low power long range wireless communication technology that operates in the sub gigahertz frequency band uh, 
And LoRa provides low bandwidth uh, data transfer over a range of uh, up to several miles, making it suitable for applications that require uh, long range communication with low data rates such as smart agriculture, remote monitoring, and smart cities. Uh, OK. Here, uh, we can see a graph. Uh, the uh, the x-axis uh, is range, and the y-axis is bandwidth. So bandwidth and the range of communication uh, technologies are two essential parameters uh, that determines the effectiveness of data transmission. And in this graph, uh, I'm, I'm, or this graph is highlighting the differences in bandwidth and range between the wireless communication technologies uh, that we talked about it, uh, Wi Fi. Bluetooth, uh, low energy or BLE, cellular and LoRa. As we can see in this graph, Wi-Fi and BLE uh, has a uh, high bandwidth, uh, but the range of the uh, the range that they cover is uh, is short. So they are here that it is in a high bandwidth, but they are in this part that is the uh, short range. And uh, LoRa, um, as its name shows, long range, it can cover the long range, uh, but the bandwidth is less than the Wi-Fi and BLE compared to them, is uh, is lower than them. And in cellular communication, uh, we can see that it has both uh, long range and uh, high bandwidth. Uh, actually, if we compare it to, if sorry, if we compare it to Wi-Fi and BLE, uh, it has um, a long. It supports or covers a longer. Uh, range um, here uh, and um, if we compare it with the uh, uh, LoRa uh, it, it has uh, uh, higher bandwidth so if you want to know what is bandwidth is refer to the range of frequencies that are available for use in communication channels and um, the unit is Hertz or the magnitudes, uh, magnitude of hertz, mega, uh, gigahertz, megahertz, or so. Let's go to the third um, topic, uh, and it's about TCP IP model layer. Uh, I want to talk about TCP IP model layer because later on, uh, the IoT uh, model layer, uh, it, the, ba the basis of the IoT model layer is based on the TCP IP model layer. So I want to uh, teach you what is TCP IP model layer that you can get better the uh, IoT model layer. So let's uh, start. Um, TCP IP layer model is a um, protocol stack that provides a, a standardized way for devices to communicate over the internet. IoT sensors use various protocols that operate at different layers of the TCP IP model to transmit, uh, transmit data to other devices or servers. Uh, the TCP IP model ensures that the data transmitted by uh, devices are delivered um, correctly and efficiently by breaking down the communication task into different layers with specific functions that keep the process standardized. Uh, there are uh, mm, uh, these rules in TCP IP. Uh, we have a set of protocols uh, are constructed and each protocol in a suite handles 
one aspect of networking, all aspect of the communication problem and partition into pieces that work together and each piece uh, we call it a layer. I brought this example here that you um, feel it better. Uh, if, let's say uh, person A wants to send a letter to person B. So this letter is written, put in the envelope and dropped in a mailbox. So after that, this letter is carried from the mailbox to a post office. After this, this letter is delivered to a, a carrier by the post office. And here you can see the parcel is uh, carried from the source to the destination. It, uh, this is uh, happening in the lower layers. As we can see, we have uh, uh, higher layers that this is happened, and then it came to middle layer, and now we are in the lower layers that the parcel is carried from the source to the destination. So let's see what is happening in the destination. The letter is delivered from the carrier to the post office, and then the letter is carried from the post office to the mailbox. Exactly the things happen here. It's uh, repeated here. And the letter is picked up, removed from the envelope, and read. So person B now mm, have access to the letter. And data packets must pass uh, through each layer before they are received by the destination device. As you can see, uh, each letter passed through each layer. Uh, the letter passed through each layer. And then um, in the destination part, it exactly went through the other um, the layers uh, and the person B could get it. And read it. So in, uh, in summary, the role of the TCP IP layer model is to provide a standardized framework for communication over computer networks uh, with each layer handling uh, a specific task to ensure the reliable and efficient transfer of data. Uh, TCP that is a uh, um, abbreviation of transmission control protocol. It breaks data into packets before sending as error checking information to packets and resemble packets when received and request transmission of failed packets. An IP that is internet protocol at addressing information to each packet identifies devices on the network and route packets from source to destination via routers. The network interface, uh, sorry, the TCP IP um, layer model consists of uh, five layers. Uh, most of the time, these two layers, layer one, physical layer, and layer two, network interface, they are merged together, so it becomes four layers. Uh, um, as you can see, we have application layer that is in the um, top, after that, we have transport layer as in layer four. In layer three, we have internet. Layer two, we have network interface. And layer one is physical. So, sometimes the network interface layer is called um, data link layer. Not sometimes, it is another uh, uh, word for that, that you can call it network interface layer or data link layer. Um, the TCP IP layering model, as I mentioned, uh, these five layers, each one has its uh, own um, responsibility or task. Um, application layer uh, provides applications with um, access to the network and handles tasks such as um, data formatting and encryption. Uh, the examples are email, video conference. And the transport layer, um, this layer ensures that data is delivered reliably and in order. Uh, 
It also um, handles tasks uh, such as error checking and flow control. The examples of this layer is TCP and UDP. The internet layer, this layer handles the addressing and routing of data packets over the network. And this is uh, the example of this layer is uh, Internet Protocol or IP. This is where your system has uh, the IP address and the transport layer is when we mention the port. If you look at the URL, we have IP address, uh, colon, a port number that uh, shows that uh, this is where we define. This is transport layer and the internet layer. And the network interface or data link layer, this is uh, responsible for handling tasks such as um, uh, data framing and error detection. And uh, we also call it MAC layer because MAC is a protocol of this layer. Um, the physical layer is uh, uh, the protocols in physical layer specify details about the underlying transmission media and the uh, associated hardware. Sorry, I wrote here EG, but I will show you um, what uh, um, medium you have. You have wired or wireless. And in wireless, uh, we saw that we have so many technologies like, like PLE, like uh, 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 LoRa one or etc. cetera. Uh, sorry, LoRa. Uh, there is a book here if you want to read more about it in computer networks and internets uh, by Douglas Ecomer. So uh, you can get it. And if you like to learn about learn more about this uh, layering and their task of each layer, you can um, refer to this book. Uh, after we learn what is TCP IP layer model, now it's time to uh, uh, introduce IoT stack of protocols. IoT stack protocols, as you can see, th there are the protocols in each layer that we talk about it. If we say we have web stack, and uh, that is TCP IP stack. Um, we, we can call it web stack or TCP IP stack, or, and uh, we have IoT stack. You can see the parallel uh, comparison between the um, uh, <coughs> protocol stack you, and that is used for the uh, web uh, or internet stack and the protocol stack, which is used for IoT. Uh, if uh, and if you remember in lecture one, I talk about the five layer IoT reference model. It uh, exactly corresponds to the TCP/IP layer model, but protocols in the layers are totally different. Uh, as you can see here, the IoT stack. Um, um, the IoT stack and the web stack, both are uh, two different sets of technologies used for communication over internet. Uh, but the web stack of protocols uh, consists of the uh, protocols uh, in the web, in the uh, application layer, consists of the protocol um, such as uh, HTTP, TCP, or um, in the uh, internet layer, it consists the uh, IP protocols. Uh, and uh, these protocols are designed to facilitate, facilitate communication between web browsers and the servers. And they are optimized for sending and receiving uh, large amounts of data over long distances. The IoT stack, on the other hand, is a set of protocols designed specifically for the unique requirements of IoT devices. And it includes protocols such as uh, MQTT and CoAP in the application layer and uh, or AMQP. 
And these protocols are optimized for sending small amounts of data over short distance with low power consumption and minimal uh, bandwidth requirements. So we can say that web stack uh, of protocols uh, is well suited for web-based application and services and the IoT stack uh, of protocols uh, is um, well suited for the unique requirements of IoT devices. Uh, uh, it, and these IoT devices that has often limited processing power, memory, and battery life. Uh, so in this slide, for me, it's really important that you know uh, the uh, you, you, you can see the comparison between this, uh, these two stack. In physical layer, we have uh, uh, different protocols. Uh, uh, for example, uh, we have IEEE, standard IEEE uh, uh, 802.15. Uh, and here we have uh, IEEE 802.11. And uh, in internet layer, we have uh, IP um, version 6 and uh, a 6 low pan. And here we have IP version 6 and IP version 4. And trans in transport layer, we have UDP, uh, DTLS, and here we have TCP and UDP. And in application layer, we have CoAP, MQTT, AM. Uh, QB and uh, in web stack we have HTTP, uh, DHCP and TLS, SSL and data format uh, in IoT stack we have binary JSON and CBOR uh, that um, when, when in lecture 5 uh, I will talk about um, the application layer protocols and also the data formats. In this part and uh, in web stack we have html uh, xml and json so uh, this is just a comparison between iot stack and web stack uh, let's see uh, the protocols of uh, this um, iot layers in the application layer um, that we mentioned that is responsible for communication between applications running on different devices. The most commonly protocols for this layer are um, MQTT and uh, CoAP. MQTT um, stands for message queuing, uh, telemetry, uh, transport, and it's a light weight protocol designed for machine to machine communication it follows a published uh, subscribe model where devices can send and receive messages through a message broker mqtt is uh, known for its low overhead making it suitable for uh, using environments where bandwidth is limited is often used in Internet of Things application to transfer sensor data to control commands uh, between devices. Uh, MQTT also provides the features uh, such as uh, message uh, persistence and quality of service, or in short, QoS. Uh, CoAP stands for constant, uh, Constraint Application Protocol, and it's designed to uh, efficiently transfer data between devices in constraint uh, network environment. A constant network environment is a network with limited bandwidth, processing power, and uh, memory resources, uh, such as wireless sensor networks or uh, industrial automation system. Uh, CoAP is optimized for such environments and uses a client-server model to transfer data um, efficiently while minimizing overhead. And it's often using IoT application also to enable communication between low power devices with limited uh, resources. So, the, uh, as I said in lecture five, we will exp uh, explore more these messaging protocols. And a transport layer, 
the, we said that this layer is uh, responsible for the reliable transmission of data between uh, applications on uh, different devices. So the most commonly used protocol for this layer is TCP uh, and UDP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and is designed to ensure that uh, data is delivered reliably from uh, one device to another. And this means that TCP makes uh, sure that all data is delivered and uh, received correctly, uh, and uh, it includes mechanism to detect and correct errors uh, that may occur uh, during transmission. UDP stands for the User Data Gram Protocol and is designed for um, fast data transfer without any guarantee that the data will be delivered uh, correctly. Unlike TCP, UDP does not include the uh, error checking or correction mechanism. This means that data may be lost or corrected uh, during transmission, but UDP is often used for uh, applications that require uh, fast data transfer, such as uh, video streaming or online gaming. So uh, UDP is a sacrifice um, uh, reliability uh, for uh, uh, speed. Uh, in simple words, uh, TCP um, ensures that data is delivered correctly, while UDP focuses on speed at the expense of reliability. Um, protocols of uh, IoT layers, uh, layer um, three, that is internet uh, layer. Uh, we said that uh, internet layer is responsible for routing data between devices on a network. Uh, two uh, protocols uh, is IP version six and uh, six uh, low pack. Uh, IP, uh, um, uh, okay, what is IP version six? Uh, before that, I wanna talk about little about uh, IP version four. I, uh, that is uh, the older version of IP version 6. IP version 4 is the uh, older and more uh, widely used version. It uses 32 bit addressing and can uh, support up to approximately 4.3 million, uh, 3 billion unique addresses, which is becoming increasingly limited uh, due to the rapid growth of internet connected devices uh, worldwide. Uh, IP version 4 addresses uh, are usually uh, represented in dotted uh, decimal notation. Uh, for example, when we say that uh, 192.168.1.2. And uh, IP version 6, uh, on the other hand, uses uh, 120. 8-bit addressing, which can support a virtually unlimited number of um, unique addresses and make it, making, uh, makes it uh, more uh, feature-proof. So IP version uh, 6 addresses uh, are represented in hexadecimal notations uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, is uh, also um, it includes several other improvements over IP version 4. And uh, the features that it has is a better security and uh, more efficient routing. Uh, uh, also, uh, another um, significant difference between these two is the way that they handle header information. Uh, so IP version 6 has a simpler header structure, which makes it faster and more efficient than IP version uh, 4. Uh, okay, another is uh, 6 low pan. 6 low pan uh, stands uh, IP version 6 over low power wireless personal area networks and is a communication uh, protocol designed to uh, allow um, devices with limited processing power and memory, such as sensors and other Internet of Things devices, to connect to the Internet using low power wireless, sense, uh, wireless networks. And it is um, um, 
uh, and, and this portal is based on the IP version 6 protocol and uh, uh, allows uh, for the transmission of uh, IP version 6 packets over um, over low power wireless links such as SIGP and Bluetooth low energy or BLE. And uh, this protocol, I mean uh, 6 low pan, um, enables these devices to be connected to the internet and participate in the growing uh, ecosystem of IoT devices. And physical layer, uh, we said that this layer is responsible for the physical transmission of data between devices and the most uh, commonly used protocols, uh, they are Wi-Fi and uh, LoRaWAN. And Wi-Fi is a wireless communication protocol that allows devices to connect to a local network and access the internet without the need for wired connection. and. Uh, LoRaWAN is a wireless communication protocol that is designed for long-range communication with low power consumption and making it ideal for IoT devices in wide area networks as we talk, it, uh, talk about it before. Um, IoT stack layers and protocol overview. Here you can see the overview of IoT stack layers and uh, protocols. So we, uh, we have four layers and uh, um, the first layer is the application layer and um, I, I brought a very simple overview of it. So application layer allow access to network resources and the unit of uh, the, um, uh, the unit of information is a uh, data, not in, um, this is the where the data is coming and uh, the transport uh, layer is uh, um, providing reliable process to process message delivery and error delivery and the unit is segment and uh, the internet is uh, the third layer and packets from source to destination and provide internet working as we talk about it and the uh, unit here is packets and data link layer that units is frame and um, uh, physical layer that units are bits and then uh, we send uh, um, all the data on uh, radio and uh, they are responsible for transmission for the between two device on the same network and in each layer uh, we learn that uh, this MQTT and CoAP belong to the application layer and TCP UDP we can have in transport layer IPv6 or uh, 6 low and uh, 6 low pan uh, can belong to the internet layer and here uh, we have medium uh, we have technology and a standard uh, or protocol. If medium is wired or cable, we use cable, uh, the technology is Ethernet and the standard is IEEE 802.3. Uh, and uh, if medium is wireless, uh, the technology is Wi Fi and the standard is IEEE 802.11. And if medium is wireless, uh, the technology is Bluetooth, the standard will be. IEEE 802.15 and this medium is wireless the technology will be LoRa and the protocol will be LoRa 1. If you want to know what is IEEE 802 is a collection of networking uh, LAN or MAN standards that cover the physical and MAC layer specification for technologies such as Ethernet, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and um, it's also important to know that LoRa, as the physical layer technology, LoRa is a technology, is the radio signal that carries the data, and LoRa1 as the MAC layer communication protocol, LoRa1 is a protocol, controls and defines how that data is communicated across the network. So LoRa is technology and LoRa1 is a protocol. And protocol is nothing except set of rules or the contracts. Okay, uh, here we have uh, IoT network layers. I uh, brought this uh, slide here because um, 
I thought it would be nice if we see um, the network layers when we use Wi-Fi and when we use LoRa. So in a case that we are using Wi-Fi, we will have Wi-Fi um, in the physical layer and Wi-Fi uh, in the second layer. And uh, I mean, let's say two of them um, are the on var are um, one layer. I mean, physical and um, data link layer and then in layer two we will have ip in layer three we will have tcp udp and layer four we will have mqtd or coap uh, but when we are using lora uh, in physical layer uh, i mean lora signal so we will have lora one um, protocol and we will have ip in layer two we will have UTP in layer three and we will have MQTT in layer four. So you can see the, um, uh, the comparison between these two. Wi-Fi, as we said, is higher speed and uh, I mean higher data rate and shorter distance, but um, uh, LoRa is lower speed or data rate and longer distance. Um, Data rate is the speed at which bits are sent from one node to another. And this is the unit of it, bits per second, kilobits per second, megabit per second. And bandwidth refers to the range of frequencies that are available for use in communication channels. And uh, unit is hertz. So you can see the frequency bands used by Wi-Fi and um, LoRa here and uh, Wi-Fi uh, operates on either 2.4 uh, gigahertz or 5 uh, gigahertz frequency bands and uh, LoRa uh, uses different frequencies uh, dif depending on the region. For example, 433 megahertz in Asia and 600 uh, sorry 868 megahertz in europe and uh, 950 megahertz in usa and also the range of uh, wi-fi and lower signals is different wi-fi signals will usually reach about uh, over 45 meters um, for a, a two point uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency and uh, using uh, 5 uh, gigahertz frequency we can reach out uh, reach up uh, to 15 meters which is suitable for local area networks but uh, in LoRa signals uh, we have much uh, longer range uh, up to 10 kilometers and make uh, make them suitable for wide area networks uh, this is because uh, LoRa have a lower frequency and can penetrate through uh, obstacle, obstacle, uh, obstacle like uh, buildings and wall uh, more easily. And in wireless communication, in a larger bandwidth means that uh, more data can be transmitted over a um, channel in a shorter period of time which can result in higher data rates. Uh, okay, uh, the topic five is uh, remote sensing versus uh, against remote control. Remote sensing and remote control are two important concepts uh, Concepts in IoT that allow devices to be controlled and monitored from a distance. Remote sensing is the process of using sensors uh, to gather information about an environment uh, or uh, a device without the need for physical access. Uh, so, in IoT, sensors can be used to detect changes in temperature, humidity, light, and other environmental factors. And this information can be transmitted wirelessly to a central location where it can be analyzed and uh, used to make decisions. For example, the application uh, can be sending the air quality sensor measurement into a map. And uh, air quality sensors are devices 
uh, that can measure various parameters of the air, such as pollutant, humidity, and temperature. And in this example, uh, an application is using an air quality sensor to monitor the air quality of a particular area. And the sensor, uh, the sensor readings are then transmitted to a map, which displays the data in a visual format. Uh, and the map can provide valuable information to users, uh, such as real-time air quality readings, trends over time, and areas with higher or lower pollution levels. And this information can be used by in individuals, business, and organizations to make informed decisions about uh, activities and help uh, improve the air quality in their uh, communities. So it was about remote sensing, but we have also remote control. And remote control uh, is the process of uh, controlling devices from a remote location. Uh, in IoT, uh, remote um, uh, control can be used to um, turn devices on and off, adjust settings, and perform other actions without the need for physical access to the devices. This is done uh, uh, by wireless communication between the uh, controlling device and the device being controlled. For example, uh, the stormy weather service that triggers a blind to go up. This is an example of remote control. And suppose the remote control system is connected to a, a weather service and uh, and this weather service can detect uh, when there is a storm in the user's area. In that case, the user can program the system to automatically raise the blind when the storm is detected. Uh, this can be a useful feature for protecting uh, windows or other areas of the uh, home from damage uh, during a storm. So this, uh, this is an example of a remote control system that allows a user to automate the behavior of a blind in response to a specific event. And in this case, uh, the event is the stormy weather service and the action triggered by this event is the blind going up. Uh, together, remote sensing and remote control enable IoT devices to be controlled and monitored from anywhere in the world and allowing for increased efficiency, convenience, and automation in a variety of applications such as home automation, agriculture, and industrial control systems. This is a general overview of IoT system. Here, uh, A to B means data flows from uh, A to B. Uh, so you have a device, and this device is a sensor uh, plus MCU, we call it device. And uh, from A point, it uh, goes to B point, that it is the client. From A to B, that we call it remote sensing, we should, pa we should uh, mm, pass uh, through this. Uh, blocks uh, first of all data is sending to gateway and uh, in the next slide i will show you uh, why we need network server after the gateway it should either we need network server or not it depends if we will use wi-fi or lora one and then after that it goes to backend or our cloud and then it backs to gateway again that is close to the client and client uh, can get the data. So uh, in this uh, over uh, in this um, course, we are sending our temperature and humidity data uh, to, uh, through all this uh, uh, graph. I mean, from A to B, and we will see we, the data will end up here and client can see okay like in this case we are self-sending and we see the data uh, and uh, we we can have a, con a remote control from b to a that when we get this data maybe we want to do something we want to have uh, some action so 
from client to device, the client will send um, some comments that can control the device. For example, in that example I told you, we can go up the line based on the uh, some event that happens. So we will have keep in your mind uh, this uh, uh, flow and then uh, hold the uh, IoT in, including uh, this um, uh, flow, uh, flow system. Uh, I brought uh, two different parts. Um, in a case that uh, we use Wi-Fi or LoRaWAN connection, we will have two different IoT flow control. I mean, uh, flow of data. Uh, so using Wi-Fi signals, uh, we directly connect to the uh, IoT devices uh, to the cloud here and without the need for a network server. And this means that the devices can send data directly to the cloud server using the internet. This is useful for devices that are within range of a Wi-Fi network and have enough power to transmit data uh, directly. And in this case, the MQTT messaging uh, protocol can be used to communicate between the devices and the cloud server. these two parts. Here we have Wi-Fi that is a wireless technology or we have uh, Ethernet that is a wired uh, uh, technology. Uh, so um, since we are clients, we, um, we can be connected to this uh, Ethernet via Wi-Fi or um, Ethernet. Uh, or wireless or wired, I mean. And using LoRa signals, we connect IoT devices to the uh, cloud uh, through a network server here, such as uh, it is called LoRa One Network Server or in short LNS, but uh, I will teach in uh, LoRa One's uh, lecture section that we have uh, TTN uh, or the Things Network or uh, the Things Speak, and they are uh, LoRa One Network Server because when we use LoRa uh, radio signal, we need the LoRa One gateway specifically LoRa One gateway. Uh, and when we use Wi-Fi radio signal, we need Wi-Fi gateway. So you should um, notice that uh, when we are using LoRa, uh, we need LoRa One gateway, and then we will need LoRa One network server. And this network server can be placed either on your gateway or in the cloud, in the backend. This is a, I, I put it in a dash um, rectangle because it can be here, sorry, or it can be here. Um, I mean, the implementation, it can be uh, in backend or it can be in LoRaWAN gateway. Uh, so, um, um, LoRa, um, um, uh, it provides a long range communication with the long uh, with the low power consumption and make it either, uh, ideal for IoT devices uh, that are spread over a large area. Uh, the network server or LNS uh, acts uh, uh, as a gateway exactly between the devices and the cloud and allow it uh, for transmission of data over the internet. That's why I say that it can be here or here. So uh, also in this case, the MQTT messaging protocol is used to communicate between the devices and the cloud server, as you can see here. And this part is the same in uh, both uh, uh, connection or communication. 
وای فای کانکشن و لورا وان کانکشن سو دیس دیس واز ا ای تینک دیس گیوز یو ا گود ا ایمیج اف هاو د ای او تی سیستم ورکس این ا وای فای سیگنال we will use, uh, we will have these uh, entities and in LoRa signal, we will have these entities. And uh, MQTT or co-op messaging protocol can be used for communication between IoT devices and the uh, uh, cloud server. Uh, we learn about communication and it's important it's importance we look at the iot network architectures and the iot data management approaches uh, we got to know communication technologies and their applications we look at tcp ip layer model and compare it to the iot layer model uh, we got to know the iot stack of protocols and we have seen the most important protocols for um, each layer of the IoT protocol stack and we look at the remote sensing and remote control in IoT uh, system. The next lecture I will talk about MicroPython programming on Raspberry Pi Pico W and um, because we need a uh, start uh, writing the code for after we learned that what is the uh, architecture system and uh, what is the connection options and now we need to know how to connect our um, uh, raspberry pi to the wi-fi and use the libraries uh, to connect it to the uh, gateways or uh, to the cloud and we will see uh, in the next lecture uh, thanks for your time and um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback or uh, question, please write me on a Slack in the group. And you are very welcome to my office in IoT uh, or in IoT Lab in Kalmar. Okay, bye.